So last time we talked about formulas for surface area of prisms and cylinders. This time we're going to go on to pyramids and cones. So the big thing you want to remember for pyramids and um, cones is we're going to talk about a different type of height, which is called slant height. Okay, so the slant height is actually the height that goes from the vertex at the top down the side to the edge of the base. That is what we call slant height. That is important because that's part of your lateral face, which you'll notice are all triangles. Okay? Um, it's different from to the altitude. The altitude is what goes from the vertex straight down the middle. We're not going to use that for surface area. We're going to use that when we talk about a volume, a volume later on. Okay? So, formulas. Obviously, feel free to use your nets if you still want to do that, but I know a lot of us just like to jump into the formulas, so let me go ahead and give you the formulas. All right, so lateral area, capital L. It's going to be one-half times the perimeter times um, L, where P, again, is the perimeter of the base. And that base, remember, could be a square, rectangle, triangle, regular, hexagon, whatever. And this cursive L, this is slant height. So remember, that's going to go from the tip to the edge of your base. Okay? One half because... Now our lateral faces, remember, are triangles. So um, kind of interesting how it all connects. Because remember, the area of a triangle is 1 half times base times height. All right, surface area, capital S. Again, lateral area, plus this time there's only one base, so we only have just one capital B. So again, B is the area of that base shape. Okay, let's do a couple examples. So example one, I want to find the lateral and surface area of each pyramid. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to make sure we identify the base. Always, always start with your base. So the base, of course, is the bottom um, where you can imagine the uh, pyramid sitting on. Or, again, the um, one that's on a triangle. Of course, if you have a triangular pyramid, then your base will also be a triangle. But that's um, kind of a special case, like your rectangular prisms. But anyway, see how I highlighted the space? We've got a square pyramid here. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate our lateral area first. Write down your formulas and go ahead and calculate the perimeter, which you hopefully see is just adding up all the sides. So that's going to give me 16. And what's the slant height here? Hopefully you're seeing that slant height, which goes from the tip to the edge is 6.3, so that is L, cursive L. So then I can go ahead and plug everything in. Lateral area is 1 half of 16 times 6.3, which will give me 50.4 square inches. Now, of course, I want you to also find surface area, so make sure you finish off the problem. So we know capital S, I'm going to do it over here, is equal to L plus 1B, right? Because we only have one base this time. So since we said this is a square pyramid, we need to find the area of our square. And what is the area of our square here? Uh, well, that should be base times height or side squared. So that's going to give me 4 times 4, which is 16. Okay, plug it all in. And we should get surface area is equal to 
66.4 square inches. All right, so there's lateral area and there's surface area. Pretty straightforward if you've got the formulas and you identify the right information. Okay, part B, what kind of pyramid is this? And can you tell me the perimeter of the base and the slant height? Well, hopefully you got hexagonal pyramid, perimeter 60, and slant height, cursive L, is 16. Let's put it all together to help us find surface area. So I'm going to scoot this up a bit. Starting off with lateral area, 1 half perimeter times slant height. Already got everything I need. Plug it in. So I should get lateral area is equal to, excuse me, 480. Oops, there we go, square inches. Now to find surface area, remember, I need to get lateral area plus the area of the base. That's right, equals there. So we've got L, now the question is what is B? Well, remember, we identified the base as our hexagon. So how do I find an area of the regular hexagon? Where that's going to be one half apothem times perimeter. I've already got P, which is 60. Find the apothem. Go ahead and try that out and see what we get for the apothem. Well, remember, you're going to do that 360 divided by N and all that good stuff and tangent. So we should get about 8.66. And now we can go ahead and calculate capital B, which is one half of 8.66 times 60. So we're going to get approximately. 259.8. Okay, now we're going to take our L, take our B, plug it in. All right, so we should get approximately um, 739.8 square inches. And there's surface area, there's lateral area. Cool, so those are pyramids. Let's take a look at cones. So again, cones and pyramids, very similar. They again share that characteristic where they have a vertex at the top. And once again, um, look, now we've got again slant height, which is that cursive L, which is important today because that's what we're looking at, not the axis or what we call the altitude. All right, because <coughs> um, in our right cone, that's our altitude. Because that's, again, going to be for volume, and we're going to deal with that later, okay? And remember, similarly to the um, net for a, a cylinder, if you think about your cone, it's a circle with, um, let me make a better one here is a circle with that curved triangular shape. Remember, this distance is once again oops, the circumference. Which is going to then affect our formulas. All right, so formulas again here are going to be similar to the pyramid formulas. Lateral area. Capital L, <coughs> excuse me, is basically again the idea of one half perimeter times um, slant height. So it's one half the circumference, which is just pi times r times slant height. So again, r is the radius. Cursive L is slant height. All right, surface area, same deal. Capital S is lateral area plus area of the base, which is just pi r slant height plus pi r squared, because our base is always a um, circle. All right? Let's go ahead and work out one last example and be done with our notes. So notice this time I want you to find um, the area of a right cone with a radius 9 and slant height of 5. Remember, if it helps, you can always draw the picture for yourself, right? Radius of 9, 
slant height, which goes down the side, this is 5, which is your cursive L. Write down your formulas, and just plug everything in. So we are going to um, leave our answer in terms of pi today. So go ahead and calculate this out and see what we get. So we should get 45 pi square centimeters. All right. Last lateral area, we're not done because we also have to find surface area. So surface area is, again, pi RL plus pi R squared. And we already found pi RL, so that's 45 pi. Let's add that to pi R squared and see what you get for surface area. Did you get 126 pi square centimeters? Well, that's what we're aiming for. Okay, B now shows where we, have, we might have a little bit of a trickier problem. So... Um, we want slant height and radius. So notice we've got radius, but I don't have cursive L. How do I find that? Well, notice I've given you the altitude, the height of my cone, and notice how this makes what kind of shape? Right triangle, right? Um, how do I find cursive L using the right triangle? Well, yeah, Pythagorean theorem. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So 8 squared plus 15 squared will give me L squared. And let's solve that. So, um, ooh, my gosh, I'm touching everything. So then we get 64 plus 225. All right, and that's going to be 289 square root, and we get 17. Perfect. Now I've got L. Now I've got R. Now I can plug everything in. So go ahead and finish this off on lateral area and surface area for me. And let's check in a moment. Go ahead and check 136 pi and 200 pi. All right. So in your practice in class, you're also going to deal with the same type of problems we had with um, cylinders and prisms, where you have to talk about the effect of changing dimensions. And remember, that's still going to be the same. Square the factor. That's the effect. And then really think about the touchable surfaces for a composite um, surface area when you're doing that in class as well. All right, please come back with questions. Thank you for listening.